My meditation this morning is from Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 55. Deuteronomy 28 goes over the blessings of God. God will bless Israel or God will bless his people if we're obedient. And then the second part of that chapter goes over the curses that will come upon God's people if they disobey. So one of the curses is in chapter 28, um, Israel will be enslaved. And then it goes over the things that will happen. Or for example, verse 53, and thou shalt eat the fruit of thine own body, the flesh of thy sons and of thy daughters, which the Lord thy God has given thee in the siege and in the straightness wherewith thine enemies shall distress thee. So that the man that is tender among you and very delicate, his eye shall be evil toward his brother and toward the wife of his bosom and toward the remnant of his children, which he shall leave. That he will not give to any of them of the flesh of his children whom he shall eat because he has nothing left him in the siege and in the straightness, wherewith thine enemies shall distress thee in all thy gates. And the word straightness is what I want to focus on. In the concordance means stress, anguish, distress, a narrow place, confinement, disability. So that's what straightness means in that context in Deuteronomy. But when it said a narrow place, it reminded me of the narrow road. Uh, Matthew chapter seven, verse 13 and 14 the straight and the wide gates. Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. So narrow road, and straightness straight so the narrow road in the concordance means to press to afflict to strict strict pressure press upon persecute press hard distress for example, circumstances that rub us the wrong way, that make us feel confined, hemmed in, restricted to a narrow place, suffer affliction, suffer tribulation, trouble. If we humble ourselves before God, then he won't have to humble us. In 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 31, for if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastised of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. So if we judge ourselves, then we will not be judged. If we can judge ourselves and see the wrong that we're doing and repent of it, so that we are forgiven, then God will not judge that sin because we have already done it ourselves and we have already repented of it and it's under the blood of Jesus. But if we don't examine ourselves and we don't judge ourselves, then he will judge us. So, okay, so going back to straightness and... Um, Deuteronomy 28.55, uh, the part where it says, 
because he has nothing left him in the siege and in the straightness. So in this situation, Israel has been surrounded by her enemies, has become a slave to her enemies, uh, is suffering famine and anguish and distress. And this word straightness also means a narrow place. It means anguish and distress. But that's because Israel had been in disobedience. And so those are the consequences. Now, when he talks about the narrow road in Matthew, he is exhorting us to take the narrow way so that we may enter into the kingdom of God because broad is the way and wide is the gate that leads to destruction. And again, narrow means to press, to afflict, pressure, to experience persecution, to suffer trouble, tribulation. But see, this is a choice that we make. We know exactly what we're doing. We know we have a choice. We can go the broad way, the easy way, or we can go the narrow road, the narrow way, the hard way, a strict way, a difficult way. But we're making the choice. Versus in Deuteronomy 28, they were experiencing that narrow place, that difficult place, because of their disobedience to God. So it was put upon them because they were disobeying God. Versus the narrow road is a choice. So either we're going to choose it and choose to walk the narrow way. Or if we continue to want to go the broad way, the easy way, we will find ourselves in straits. We will find ourselves in distress and anguish. We will suffer because the broad way leads to destruction. So how do we experience the narrow road? Every time we choose to obey God versus obeying what our flesh wants, versus obeying what the world dictates, what the culture dictates, but we choose to obey God. We may suffer persecution. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 12, Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. So whenever we choose we're going to obey God rather than man. We're going to obey God's ways rather than the world's ways. We will suffer persecution. We will suffer trouble. We're going to feel the pressure of our peers, the pressure of our colleagues to do it their way, to go along with them. That's the narrow road. If we want to live in truth, truthfully, if um, we don't want to go along with the, po uh, the company's policy because it's compromising the truth, we may experience tribulation from our managers. We may experience Exclusion. If we don't want to give in to gossip, the gossip of work, the gossip of uh, the people we work with, we may stand out. We're not part of the group. 
We're not part of their clique. So they may exclude us, uh, make us feel like we don't belong. We may experience persecution. We may experience trouble because we choose the narrow road, because we choose to walk in obedience to God, which is against the way the world is, the way the world works, the culture. So for instance, now in our current times, if we refuse to call a woman that is a woman but wants to be a man and is transgender, but we refuse to call that woman a man. Or if it's a man wanting to be a woman and is transgender and we refuse to call that man a woman, in certain jobs that we may work at, if we don't call them by their pronouns that they want, we could experience persecution. We could experience being fired because we refuse to be inclusive. This is what I mean by um, suffering persecution. Because yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. But this is the narrow road. This is a choice. This is, we're making a choice. The broad way, the easy way, which means go along to get along, do what everybody else is doing so that we don't stand out, so that we're, we don't get in trouble, so that we don't suffer persecution. That's the broad way. That's the easy way. But if we're gonna stand up to God's ways, if we're going to obey God rather than man, we may suffer persecution. We may suffer trouble. We may feel the pressure, the pressure of our peers, the pressure of our families. That is the narrow road. But if we choose to obey God rather than man, we have made a choice. At that moment, we're making a choice. We're making a choice that we're going to walk the narrow road, even though it's a lonely road. Even though it's a road where we feel pressure, where we may experience persecution, trouble, but we choose that way because we want to obey God. But when we refuse to obey God and we're going to take the easy way, the easy road, eventually we will find ourselves in a narrow place, meaning we're going to find ourselves in straightness. We're going to find ourselves under distress because the broad way leads to destruction. So one, where it says in Deuteronomy 28.55, because he has nothing left him in the siege and in the straightness. So, because of disobeying God, eventually we will find ourselves in that place of straightness, of difficulty, of anguish. Versus, if we're going to obey God, we can still, it's a, it's a narrow place. It is a narrow road. We will experience persecution because we want to obey God. But it is a choice we're making. It isn't being put upon us because of our disobedience. It is being put upon us because of our obedience to God. That's the difference. 